Well, Ben, thanks for joining us again. Um, look forward to look forward to chatting today. Best way to spend the lunch hour on Tuesday, by far. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, unfortunately, we're living in a pretty crazy world right now. There was just a massive earthquake uh, in Haiti, um, as well as wildfires around the world, everything from the west coast of California, and as well as in Turkey, Greece, and um, seemingly every continent, um, apart from Antarctica at this point, unfortunately. And, um, you know, I wish we could solve all these problems, but um, they're, they're hard problems to solve. And I guess the goal of today's conversation is, you know, helping companies think about how they can respond when these things happen. You know, we hear time and time again from, you know, our customers and people in the industry, what should we be doing? You know, we want to help, our employees want to help. And I think it's a hard thing to wrap your head around. And so I'm hoping today we can chat and understand what are some different ways of attacking this um, and trying to help in these causes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can start in a number of different areas. I think one area that we could start talking about, Andy, is just, you know, immediate impact versus long-term impact. So I think, you know, when a natural disaster like that occurs, you know, it's just a natural human instinct to want to lend a helping hand. And I think we we lean quickly into that immediate impact. What can we do right now to make an impact on the ground, which is great. And oftentimes that's really needed. I think the other uh, scenario that we have a lot of companies thinking about is like, what can we do to make a long-term impact? And maybe we are already doing things um, to make a difference. So for example, when we look at wildfires, uh, one of the major drivers of wildfires right now has has been climate change. And so there are companies that may be making steps or, or implementing programs right now to do their part in regards to how do we alleviate the climate change that is occurring. Um, and so I think it's it's a big question in regards to where do we want to put our mark? Um, is that a, a high, are we doing a long-term impact focus or are we doing immediate impact? Both are great. Um, we can make cases for both directions, but um, I think that's one of the first questions that we would have for companies is like, where are you trying to like make that mark? I'm curious if you have any thoughts around that. We can dive into any one of those channels. Well, I think that's a good way to bifurcate the conversation, immediate impact versus long-term impact. Although I would say one of our big focus is always to make sure those are aligned. Mm-hmm. You, you know, and and um, I think something we've seen time and time again is companies mm-hmm. want to jump in, provide impact, and then they leave. And, and where we think most of the impact is had for the people in places that need our help are where there's the short-term impact, and then the long-term impact continues. Because we may forget about the Haitian earthquake in six to nine months, but they are not going to be forgetting it on the ground, and there is going to be serious help needed there. And so, um, obviously, combining both is the ideal but maybe let's jump towards the short-term impact. You know, how would you focus on, and let's just pick the wildfires um, as one. H- how would you think about supporting those if you were a company, if your employees were saying, hey, we work in California, this is our backyard. We think the company should be helping. We want to help. Um, what would you suggest in that situation? Yeah, I think, you know, it comes down to a lot of what you and I talk about is like identifying the right organizations, Right. So when we look at fires as an example, there's immediate fire response, which is like supporting firefighters, the struggles that they're currently having in those challenges, what can we do there? And then there's the response after those fires are closed out. And so that's maybe prepping the land, reforesting the land, so on and so forth. Um, Also, you know, we look at like with fires, like indigenous practices now, are there indigenous tribes that we can support, indigenous practices we can support in organizations? And with each one of those for that immediate response, organizations are critical, right? And so it's again, to you and I always saying this over and over again, how do we vet really good organizations? Because you're right, like with the Haiti example, even nonprofits sometimes, unfortunately, they're on the ground, they respond quickly, which is wonderful, but then they're out. Um, And then those problems are still felt for months, years, so on and so forth. And we forget about them so often too. Um, And so nonprofit vetting and understanding how nonprofits are actually on the ground working and what their plan is for that disaster is really critical. Because if you are investing all this time and energy supporting a cause and a nonprofit only to find that they're not going to be making an, an impact not immediately, but also in the long term, it could be really challenging. And so to any company that's looking to make a difference, understanding the nonprofit organizations on the ground is really critical. Um, We hear does a lot of that work. So we help a lot of companies do that work. Um, And then it's again going, okay, now that we've identified these great nonprofit organizations that are currently responding, 
what are their needs and what are their challenges? The last thing we want is employees doing any kind of busy work. Um, and last thing we want is any employees doing uh, fundraising and donating funds or doing matching programs for a, <laughs> a nonprofit that's not maximizing impact. So understanding those gaps and challenges that nonprofits have are really key. Um, and I can give some examples of that as well. No, I think the two things that I took out from there, and you know, I think we fundamentally agree is you want to give the immediate impact, but it's far better to take a little bit of time, reflect on a situation, find out who's really making the impact. Because when a natural disaster happens or a wildfire, you know, the nonprofits need to react and need to figure out how they help in this situation. So that takes time. And then you need to find out which ones are doing the most impact. And I think back to this example, I believe it was the campfire. Um, recently in California, two years ago, three years ago, where all the houses were burned. And so people were flooding the area with support and um, things for these people, but there was too much stuff for the individuals. And so everyone was donating to these nonprofits who were supplying the immediate after effects, you know, clothes for the families that had lost everything, but the families just had too much stuff and they had nowhere to go. And so um, in that situation, it's actually best to help them with temporary housing rather than the immediate things backpacks, all of those things. Um, and so every situation is different and funneling it to the right nonprofit who's actually delivering impact is super important. Um, and so I, that's what I really took away from your message there. And let's double click on something you just said, which is like, I think, I think it's totally okay to take the time to respond in the right way. I think there's such a, an urgency, right? When a natural disaster occurs and it, and a, a big drive with that is your employees, right? Your employees are going, oh, we need to do something. And that's really challenging because you want to make sure you're taking the time to understand where the need is. Your example of the Paradise Fire taking place, the campfire, is, is spot on in the sense that like people are having these reflex reactions and donating stuff that's just unnecessary. Like I was on the ground when those fires were taking place, doing some of the volunteering, and these these families were just like, we don't need any of this stuff. Like we already have those things, and so. And unfortunately, a huge amount of waste is produced as a byproduct, which is just really sad. And so I think just taking the time to understand the data, understand how you can best respond as a company with your resources is totally okay and encouraged. Um, and I have that myself. I have personal stories where I just want to respond just because I have an urge. And it's tough sometimes to pump the brakes and go, let's let this see what's happened, see where the need is, see where the gaps are, and then respond. Yeah. And I think, you know, People want to help out right away, and there's a certain momentum behind that. And we've seen some some companies um, start one donations, but also you know, employee fundraising to funds that they have not decided where they're allocated to, right? And so we could have a Haitian earthquake fund and say, hey, you know, please start donating. We're going to pick the next not best nonprofits over the next two to three weeks, and then we'll be donating the funds. But there's nothing wrong with capturing that excitement, that momentum for impact. But just being a little more thoughtful about the impact, um, I think, is the message you're you're saying. Yeah, and the fund idea is a great idea. Um, rather than doing, you know, a matching program or a grant program right out the gate, like just having a fund and then deciding where the, that fund can be distributed is is really key. Because oftentimes, yeah. you know, these to our point, there's so much urgency. These people are getting so much help right out the gate. It's the few months after that they're really struggling. Like with that, par we're going to keep using the Paradise Fire. It was it was the few months after where people were really struggling. That support all dissipated. Um, they were really struggling with housing. A lot of them lost their jobs, um, and so like that's where there were huge challenges. And so I think that's really yeah. really key to note on. Yeah, and, and so now let's pivot to the long term support. So how do companies you know take the Haitian earthquake or the um, you know the wildfires, and how do they do long term changes and continue the excitement? and the dedication around those causes when, you know, it might not be as recent in the news. Yeah, I think um, I always like understanding what are underlying drivers of why the natural disaster occurred in the first place. And when the natural disaster does occur, what do we think are going to be the long-term impacts to that culture, to that community, to that society as a result with the Haiti earthquake, you know, they continue just to be hit over and over again with earthquakes and natural disasters. And so, what is a long-term response that could be done to better prepare these communities, this country to respond disasters in that kind of increased capacity um, is something to really look at. And so again, you know, with the fires, 
underlying drivers, it's doing what you can as a company to work against climate change, really critical. Um, I think that's something that's really powerful and can go a very long ways. Um, and then on the flip side to that, what are going to be the, the areas that we can help in the long term with the Haiti example? It's, it's looking at how can we support the governments, the nonprofits that are exist in Haiti that aren't just helicoptering in, doing a quick rescue coming out. Um, that's how companies can think about a lot of long-term. And I think long-term campaigns, um, like We Are Haiti and stuff like that, where these are ongoing, you know, multi-month, sometimes year-long campaigns to support a country that is in substantial need or a community that's in substantial need can go a really long ways. Um, employees can really rally behind that as well. And so i um, curious if you have any ideas as well, Andy, around that, and just, but just kind of how I break down and think about it. Yeah, I think, you know, there's a few ways to think long-term. How long-term are we talking here? And I think over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of companies fundamentally shift their business model from an environmental standpoint. So they're better positioned to help these things in the long run, right? Mm-hmm. That That's multi-year, probably multi, you know, probably 20, 30 years to to really societal change. Um, but I think when we think long-term, let's think a year to two years, you know, for the change really to happen in Haiti, for example, you have to continue supporting. You need to change how you're supporting, right? You need the immediate response. Then you need the education and the changes. And then you need to follow through on that. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that takes a long time. And, you know, some of the best companies that we see who are incredible at this, they realize how big of an emotional um, component this is with your employees. And the key way is to continue telling the story. The reason we're captured by this is because it's in the front page of the New York Times, on CNN, on Wall Street Journal, and we're we're seeing the images and the pictures and the stories. And to really continue that, you need to show the stories and how they continue over the next few years. Mm -hmm. And companies who do this well and focus on long-term impact are really good at this and really good at telling that story and continuing to, to keep the excitement of people to help here. Um, that's what makes um, makes a difference and continues getting people, you know, excited to deliver impact. Um, yeah. And I think um, companies don't have to go at it alone with that long-term impact strategy, right? I love seeing nonprofits that collect a number of different companies to be that support mechanism. So, I mean, you as one company can only do so much, but you with 10 other companies that are investing in this community, investing in this challenge. I think that's really powerful. You get a lot of leverage. And so look for those opportunities as a company when you're responding in a very long-term fashion. Look for those opportunities where you're not going at it alone. You're working with great partners. Um, I think that can lead you to a lot of success. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, any last minute thoughts on immediate responses to disasters and long-term responses and how you um, would handle the situation at a company? I think just the, the the tips that we've covered, but just to highlight them once again, is just understand if you're going to look to make an immediate impact or a long-term impact, pump the brakes, do the data analysis and understand where you can maximize impact with your resources as a company. I know there's that urgency to get out there right away, but you'll make such a, 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 an increased impact if you just take the time to do the research and understand where the gaps are and respond in that fashion. So think about that um, as well as, you know, As always, involve your employees. I mean, these employees of yours, they're going to be incredibly passionate about responding. They probably have great ideas. They probably have nonprofit organizations that they've done their research on. So involving your employees and making them be part of your division that's responding, really critical and increase that engagement across the company that I think is just really powerful. So it's just some thoughts that we've surfaced throughout this call that we just want to highlight for people. Andy, any others that we think we should double click on for folks? No, I love it. I love everything you said. I mean, it's all complicated problems and no easy way to, to, to choose the right response. But I think taking a, um, a measured, thoughtful approach to the short term and long term is the best thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're here to help. If anybody needs help, this is what we love doing. So please reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you. Yeah. Well, thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. And um, go enjoy the rest of your, your Tuesday lunch. Will do. The quinoa is calling me. So <laughs> talk to everybody later. Thank you.